Thank you all for joining the webinar on Advanced Warehouse Analytics for SAP Extended Warehouse Management. We would be starting now. All right. Thank you, Sukhvati. Um, thank you all again uh, this morning for taking the time to join this webinar. Uh, you know, we have an exciting uh, group of uh, panelists here. Uh, we are very honored to have uh, Mr. Jorg Michaelis, who is the Chief Product Owner of SAP Extended Warehouse Management uh, from SAP on this panel, on this webinar. Uh, I am the VP of Logistics Innovation at uh, Stellium. And uh, Karthik uh, is also joining us to give the demonstration of Advanced Warehouse Analytics. He's the Associate Director of uh, Stellium. Uh, as far as the agenda goes, we're going to start off with, uh, you know, uh, Jorg uh, highlighting some of the warehouse management trends and giving an outlook on XN SAP Extended Warehouse Management. Now, uh, I'll take a few minutes to give you an overview of what Ad Advanced Warehouse Analytics is about. Um, and following that, uh, Karthik will give a, a comprehensive demo of uh, Advanced Warehouse Analytics. Uh, we're going to leave about 10 to 15 minutes uh, for Q&A so that we are able to answer all of your questions and um, and you know if there are any questions that we are not able to cover as part of this webinar we will answer that via email and you're always free to reach out to us via email if you need additional information or some of your questions need to be answered in a more detailed manner with that i'll hand the um you know mic over to mr york michaelis and you know he'll take us through the uh, a warehouse Outlook, uh, where either SAP EWM Outlook. Okay, thank you. Do you see my screen? Yes, we do. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, um, good morning, or here in Germany, it's actually a good evening already. Uh, my name is uh, Jörg Michaelis. I'm working for SAP as a chief product owner. This means I'm working in the development part of um, SAP and my responsibility is the continuous innovations for um, SAP Extended Warehouse Management. So my team develops and uh, we are defining the roadmap and the, the priorities for the next years. So um, more than uh, 14 years with SAP, 24 industry years in logistics area, so I think warehouse management is my passion. Um, what's our vision at SAP? Um, our vision is the so-called intelligent enterprise. And um, there are some factors to deliver the intelligent enterprise. On the, on the left hand, you will see what we define as the intelligent suite. And the intelligent suite exists of a digital core, which you know as ECC, or as we, as we define it digitally, S4 HANA. And around the digital core, um, solutions for people management, spend management, manufacturing, customer experience. The question is, where is EWM in this? And we are part of two areas. We are part of the so-called digital core of S4HANA and we are part of the line of business manufacturing and supply chain and those also explains nicely how you run EWM. Part of your core or separately we call it decentral. And how does the intelligence suite become intelligent? Number one, we are working on integrating all these solutions, all the SAP products very, very tightly. This is a clear priority within our development roadmap. And this is what SAP customers expect from SAP. So integrating. The next thing is getting visibility into the solutions. And you will learn later how we get visibility with SAP tools and how Stellium connected these tools to give you insights about warehouse operations. And on a separate layer, we want to connect the suite with intelligent technologies. There are 
SAP Cloud Platforms, SAP Leonardo, Machine Learning. Here we are just starting this year in the area of extended warehouse management. We are working on a cloud platform which helps you to optimize your warehouse in the form that we resequence the warehouse orders you are processing. And we will enlarge these investments uh, in the next years as well. Today we talk about SAP Extended Warehouse Management. Some might have heard about it. Um, of course, a warehouse solution has inbound processing, outbound processing. I haven't seen a warehouse doing not one of those processes. With inbound, you might think about, yeah, a supplier sends an ASN or you capture the ASN and you do the receiving. We think around that. Our inbound process starts at your supplier. It can even start on the Ariba platform that your supplier enters an ASN on the Ariba platform. I mean, isn't the perfect goods received where nothing needs to be entered from a paper sheet, where everything is arriving electronically, is advised, you know, when it's received, how many pallets are expected, and what is the, the detailed content. But we also think about inbound when it comes to production. We think about inbound when you think about e-commerce. We have countries here in Europe, they have e-commerce rates, return rates, 40% in the fashion industry. People order three pairs of shoes, um, being optimistic that one has the right size, maybe the right color, so the other two are just being returned. And also EWM has capabilities since 9.5 to handle, we call it unplanned returns. What me, what makes me quite proud as a product owner, um, we have a footprint these days, 55 plus countries. This could be a global company here in France having countrywide operations and the recent story I heard is Spain, they were enrolled, so a French company rolled out to Spain, rolled out to North Africa, Tunisia, rolled out to uh, India, of course, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and so on. So really 55 countries on the world where you can see EWM operations these days. 1,700 customers, are they all live? Probably not, but this is, customers buying our solution, maybe the implementations is ongoing, will be happening in the next years, but um, a good good portion definitely live um, with the product. There is intelligence built and optimization built in. Not every customer is maybe not using every piece of it yet, but we are enhancing those capabilities release by release to make them easier to implement, faster to adopt, and um, also extending the scope. So one of the latest in 2018 ABC analysis based on warehouse tasks, 9.5 was a big, big investment for labor management, shift models, labor, new labor standards, uh, um, moving away from um, customizing, cost stock consolidation to consolidate partials. So it's not even the, this, these capabilities are, are there, but we are also working very closely with customers, uh, incorporating their feedback and really extending the solution uh, year over year. Um, some technical um, arguments on EWM. There is not a single customer with everything the same as everybody else. So, Flexibility is one of our key trends um, and key principles. So you can run, as you see, EWM connected to your ERP. You can run also ERP um, or when you move to S, ERP to S4, you continue with EWM like you have it today. And since 2016, you can run EWM as part of your S4 HANA. So EWM is a component like many other components in S4HANA. This is all out in all deployment option, many, many uh, live customers. 
the next big innovation you can expect in May. And I try to use a little bit the same color coding. On the top, you have EAP and the part lower, EWM. And the new thing we are currently working on is to run EWM decentral on the S4 HANA stack. S4 HANA is the key priority for SAP. All our investments, innovations go to SAP S4 HANA. Beside of many, many more products for sure. But S4 HANA is the stack where we believe we see warehouse operations in the future. In this presentation, like here, it's decentral. So this system is connected to your EAP, or if you are using S4 HANA already, to an existing S4 HANA system. And one thing is very important we plan to release this offering May this year. The exact date is currently May 8. Um, don't um, mess up with me if it will be May 9th, but I will definitely uh, around this, we plan to offer this. So same kind of process integration as you know it today. Decentral warehouse management, but this is a full S4 HANA. And the big benefit is we can leverage all the capabilities of S4 HANA. And you only need to run one stack. So if you as a company run a central S4 or a decentral S4 for your organization or your provider, it is one software line to manage and to run. The last big innovation, November 2018. SAP also offers most of our solutions as cloud products. And here we are not talking on private cloud, which is just deployed for you with your release cycles. Um, this is our first public cloud offering for warehouse management. SAP S4 HANA Cloud is a public cloud offering which is getting enhanced quarter by quarter. So the latest shipment, November 2018, and just two weeks back, February 2019. Logical consequence, the next one will be May 2019. So quarter by quarter, SAP upgrades the system every quarter, new innovations, roundups. So it's a predefined warehouse management solution. Much less scope than you know from the typical EWM. So if we have, let's say, 25 strategies. This solution has three put away strategies to make it very simple to compare it. But we work together with customers and partners to define most relevant ones. And our clear focus is not the big distribution centers of the world. It is a subsidiary business of a company where they need warehouse operations, sales operations, production, purchasing operations. So we extend the scope of S4 HANA Cloud with warehouse management operations. So we delivered lots of Fiori, lots of migration objects. So really our focus, fast implementation and a great user experience. And SAP gives you quarterly updates. I just want to highlight some. This is our shipping cockpit on Fiori. So you see what is your picking progress when is um, here you, we select, selected last week? Sorry, this is a German format, but you can also see the planned route departure date in the list. So you can adjust the layout. You can define a default layout, a default filter when you started. So this is SAP Fiori. And then you can see two items in this delivery. You can dial in and navigate to the single warehouse task. Fiori only in the cloud. The next innovations we shipped last year, September, and also this is part of S4 HANA Cloud. This is a packing screen where you scan a pick box or a delivery um, number and the, the system tells you what has all been picked, which is here on the left side of the screen. 
And by scanning the item here in this example, product S01 was scanned. Here you see the details, and now you can transfer it uh, by clicking on the pack button or on the partial pack button from the left to the right. Cloud operations. As the Stellium colleagues only gave me 15 minutes, um, what is our strategy at SAP? Number one, strengthen the integration. As an SAP customer, you should expect integration end-to-end, -end, solutions that work together by installation and not by 100 days of additional RISEF uh, codings. Is there things to improve? Yes, always. There are so many SAP solutions, so many variations in so many industries. So for me as a product owner, very clear. This year you can expect a huge wave of innovations uh, for improved integration, and this will also continue uh, throughout the next year. Currently we are enhancing our production scope when it comes to repetitive manufacturing. Um, we are improving um, quality management uh, roundups. Um, Simplify the integration, so this is also very clear. Looking on the cloud, I just mentioned quarter by quarter we deliver innovations. And we do this, you will see a publicated note, roadmap also at the end of the slide deck and the attachments. Um, in May you can expect Kanban scenarios, uh, later on um, um, automating uh, production uh, supplies, so um, this is definitely uh, very clear. And what also customers ask, can you give me a standalone warehouse management solution? So where I don't need to implement S4 HANA purchase, S4 HANA production first. So just standalone as the nature of EWM. This is a clear priority in our roadmap, but we will not reach this before 2020 because we want to make the interfaces in a way that you can also connect it to non-SAP solutions, so we will bring the interfaces to a different technologies. Optimization. In one of the latest releases, our colleagues from TM, Transportation Management, they introduced these nice, not the graphic, but the algorithms to plan a truck in such a way. So this is really 3D package and load building. And they, they really do stacking of product cartons, like a, I always call it a Tetris algorithm. So it really knows the X, Y, Z coordinates. This is now introduced last year, December, will be enhanced during this year. So the logical next step, we will now bring TM and EWM together. It was done in project based already, but more um, out of the box. Another thing I mentioned, SAP Warehouse Insights is our first uh, optimization engine on a cloud platform. We are currently working with beta customers here and also plan to provide a solution by the third quarter of this year. So a cloud solution, which is only there to optimize current um, execution, but it's not a warehouse engine to um, to process here, so not a, a new SAP warehouse product. It is only an optimization tool. And the last one in our strategy, open the system. What we see, there are so many flavors of warehouses, so many industries, so many country, warehouse, product specific um, topics in logistics. And we thought about how do we help the implementation teams, the past partners in the best way. Yes, you can find hundreds of user exits, we call them bodies. But we believe the next step of innovation is offer public APIs via a web service interface. When I talk to SAP partners, startup companies, they tell, look, we have a smartwatch. I, sh I show you how you can do your picking operations with a smartwatch. To be honest, I struggle sometimes with these ideas, but at the end, when you test a couple of minutes, it all makes sense. Will we at SAP build screens, devices for all this? Probably not. With our wide range of 
geographical industry coverage, we work together with our ecosystem here. And therefore, public APIs that a partner can build a native iOS screen, build a native Android, whatever you device, whatever operating system you have, we will not stop what we have today, but we believe the future is opening up the system and um, uh, accelerating the ecosystem here. Now I'm ready and Stellium will take over. Why I'm convinced that this is a good approach here. Um, we believe analytics is always good for real-time insights. You need visibility to gain great decisions. So where are you on your, what is going good or what, where do you need to improve? And you don't want to do this at the end of the quarter or at the end of the month. You want to do it in real time. And based on the technology Stellium use, which is core data service, they are accessing business objects directly with a predefined set of industry specific um, KPIs. So um, I'm happy for having a partner with this um, add-ons to the SAP solution. Um, will you expect this? of SAP in the future, I can tell you, maybe on the on the baseline architecture, we will provide more CDS views. But to the definition of KPI, definition of thresholds, I think therefore the, the ecosystem like here, Stellium is um, a great channel for SAP to bring this forward. And enjoy um, the presentation. Sorry guys, five more minutes and I'm stopping now. So. Let's uh, listen to the Stellium colleagues. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jörg. Um, it was very useful to see what is coming and all the exciting things that are happening around SAP EWM. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is take a few minutes to explain the rationale for uh, developing advanced warehouse analytics. Uh, one of the things that uh, you know was very obvious, I was at a warehouse for the last two weeks and, uh, and what is important for people that are running supply chains, people that are responsible for warehouse operations, and even people that are on the floor is to have the value of knowing what is going on at any given time in the warehouse. Um, you know, what I observed is that, uh, you know, people were getting end of the day reports, uh, essentially, you know, maybe perhaps end of the month in terms of, uh, uh, you know, customer service levels and warehouse uh, efficiency. You know, that is not sufficient anymore. And that was one of the reasons, key reasons why we developed advanced warehouse analytics. And from a, you know, I'll start off with the benefits, why it is needed. And then, you know, Karthik is going to cover some of the key aspects of uh, advanced warehouse analytics. Um, the one thing that we observed was effectively the people that are on the warehouse, warehouse running the warehouse, or the leadership that is responsible for distribution, getting product to the customer or getting product into the warehouse, uh, really want some real-time views and also historical performance of various uh, you know, warehouse metrics. And we'll get to that uh, pretty quickly. So that's one thing that we noticed. Uh, the second big thing is when there are uh, some deviations from expected performance. Um, you know, people need to understand as soon as possible, you know, why, what is that deviation? You know, what is, and what is causing that problem? Right. Uh, those are things that, you know, you'd want to, from a continuous improvement perspective, get to it fast and resolve the root cause. Um, and, and the third one that we've found very, very valuable for distribution leaders is, you know, if you have 50 warehouses, you know, from uh, central DCs to, you know, tens of regional DCs, there has to be a way of understanding how each um, DC is doing in a in an apples to apples way, right? Um, you know, you can't have 
uh, you know, different ways of doing the same activity in different uh, DCs. But importantly, you also need to know how each DC, what are the strengths of individual DCs? Uh, well, what that helps is for you to understand, you know, where should uh, we focus our efforts in terms of improvement, in terms of product flow, and in terms of, uh, you know, additional investments, you know, whether it be equipment or training. So to have that multiple multi-warehouse view with common metrics is extremely useful. And, and the fourth thing that we uh, really focused on from a benefits perspective is, you know, you already are running, um, you know, simple to sophisticated and mature SAP EWM operations. Uh, and there is no need to add more to that stack. Uh, so we did, we used everything that is available within the SAP technology toolbox uh, to provide, uh, to build advanced warehouse analytics. Um, the one advantage here, the overriding advantage here is adoption can be very easy and fast. Um, and finally, you know, these metrics can, you know, because we've uh, deployed it across industries and, uh, you know, it can be, depending upon your industry with some minor adjustments, uh, support your uh, KPIs as well as uh, performance metrics. Um, you know, and what is important is, you know, how do you uh, really justify, uh, you know, warehouse operations? You know, what used to be, I would consider a back office type of operation now, in the age of Amazon and omni-channel and, you know, two-hour deliveries is central to your corporate strategy, right? You know, especially if you are in, you know, customer or consumer facing industries or in distribution or even in manufacturing. You know, how do you, how fast can you get your product to the customer uh, is fundamental to how you compete in the market. So from an increasing revenue perspective, we look at warehouse being at the front and center of customer service. Uh, you know, you need to be able to ship fast you need to be able to uh, do it in a quality manner. You, know, you can't have too errors at all. And your warehouse needs to be uh, you know, flexible enough that it can adjust and respond to changes all the time, right? Uh, you now there are peak loads, there are not so peak loads, you know, how do you work around that? So your warehouse is effectively your channel for revenue, increasing your revenue, increasing your customer service. So you can easily justify investments into warehouse improvement operations. Uh, the second aspect of, uh, you know, warehouse where it is around reducing costs and, you know, improving asset efficiency, right? To turn on assets. Uh, you know, warehouse is nothing but, you know, on one side while you are servicing the customer is nothing but cost sometimes. So how do you optimize your costs? You know, what is the correct automation equipment? Uh, what is the correct labor force that is needed? Right, uh, and how do you balance the work so that you know people are not idling? So these are all metrics that you actually have to monitor to reduce your uh, warehouse cost and consequently supply chain costs. And we'll cover these types of metrics as part of uh, advanced warehouse analytics. And uh, finally, I think foremost, I would say the advanced warehouse analy analytics solution is designed to support the needs of logistics management. Uh, you know, these are teams that are responsible for ensuring, you know, both that the product is getting to the customer fast and uh, in, a, in a quality manner. And, uh, you know, they're also trying to get, you know, suppliers integrated into the inbound flows. Uh, they have a lot of requirements in terms of uh, performance metrics. How are we serving our customers? You know, what is the cost of serving our customers, which, distribution center is better, uh, where should we improve, and how do we cross-pollinate good ideas, right, you know, within the DCs. Those are the types of answers, questions that they have, and Advanced Warehouse Analytics answers those questions. Uh, the second role that we look at it is a warehouse manager. You know, the warehouse manager is responsible for the performance of the, a specific warehouse. And they have their own information and insight requirements. And, you know, AWA covers those too. And Karthik will take you through, you know, what type of metrics make sense for a warehouse manager. And finally, a supervisor who is responsible for zones of a warehouse or particular processes. And they have their own analytical requirements, information that they need 
you know, certain types of root cause analysis. And Karthik, again, we'll cover these, uh, uh, you know, metrics in the demo. So if you really look at it, you know, you are addressing your key business stakeholder requirements with advanced warehouse analytics. Um, and then there are a number of other, uh, you know, ancillary benefits. Uh, you know, a lot of people have continuous improvement initiatives, you know, whether it's respect to performance, uh, throughput or safety or uh, you know how balanced is the work you know how to improve worker performance uh, so those are all uh, you know in, insights that you need and awa covers those um, and it, in this edition provides you with a number of uh, drill down options you know more understanding of uh, what the source of issues could be uh, so that you know people can actually take some actions around it um, as far as, uh, you know, coverage of process areas, you know, AWA covers with specific metrics around inbound, outbound, you know, internal storage operations, replenishments, etc. But in addition, uh, one of the things that uh, I think, you know, if there are people that are, uh, you know, experienced with SAP Extended Warehouse Management, you know, there are a number of things that, you know, you should uh, do to keep SAP EWM running effectively. Uh, AWA covers some of those uh, aspects as well in terms of metrics, you know, you know, how good is the master data? Where do you need to make corrections, right? You know, how do you manage queues? Uh, things like that you'll see as part of the demo itself. Um, and finally, I think, you know, it is one thing to have real-time warehouse view, uh, but from an improvement, continuous improvement perspective, you also need to, you know, have how have we performed over, the, over a period of time across multiple warehouses. Uh, that type of information is also available and accessible through advanced warehouse analytics. Okay, uh, overall, you know, Karthik will cover at length here, but there are a number of out of the box KPIs that are available, uh, covering many of the process areas that are important from a logistics and warehouse operations perspective. And, and finally, again, you know, these are some numbers with respect to what do you need to uh, do from an EWM operations and keep it running effectively. Um, so again, Karthik will go through this a little bit more, um, you know, in detail. Uh, what it is in, in a simple lab, uh, manner here is that we are using standard SAP technology stack and components so that, you know, your adoption, you know, your costs are minimal or nothing and your adoption is quick and fast. With, uh, within the existing SAP EWM infrastructure. Um, there are multiple ways uh, you know, from a deployment perspective. You know, the easiest would be, obviously, if you're running SAP EWM on HANA, you know, this is just an additional content that you need to add. Um, and then, you know, and things get even better, you know, if you start to consider SAP Cloud Platform, uh, where, you know, you just uh, really access SAP EWM directly from the cloud platform. And if your information requirements are a little bit more uh, comprehensive or you have SAP EWM running on other databases, uh, you can also put a sidecar here. Uh, for example, what I'm seeing, you know, the, so the data is uh, extracted into an SAP HANA database and, you know, we still are using NetWeaver uh, to set up the application views. Again, again, you know, we'll cover, Karthik will cover those. And, um, you know, towards the end, we have more time for Q&A and we can, we'll be able to answer your questions in more detail. With that, Karthik, yours. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Hi, this is Karthik Krishnan. And uh, I'm on the Associate Director of Australia. I take care of innovations. Having said that, I've also been working on SAP EWM quite a number of years. I've been right from consultant to the architects. And I've also been uh, designing various solutions across industries. And uh, these implementations have really able to be uh, provide uh, various uh, views and the needs of how a particular supervisor or a shop floor executive is really looking upon what is his daily needs. What does he wants to really take up decisions? So, right, it could be from the logistics management. Uh, it could be the manager and it could be the supervisor. 
and of course there could be other uh, people on the floor like it could be a resource planner it could be your cycle count expert who is wanting to do it so so every every person every role in the warehouse who plays a very critical function towards customer delivery has their own specific set of needs okay so when you look at from the uh, warehouse uh, or the logistics management so they look at from a very top level in terms of what is my uh, what is my effective how good is my warehouse how are the uh, things are happening across the warehouse in terms of so let's start with uh, on time and full am i fulfilling the deliveries based on my commitment date given to my customers yes no so this could give me a color based indicators so uh, you can set up the thresholds or targets and really just color up once it's going below the thresholds but still a uh, 50% uh, from all my locations uh, the moment i drill down i would really want to see across all my locations which of these warehouses is efficient and other warehouses are up to the mark and it's the operations are still on so i can still do further drill down on one of my warehouses of 62% and see at a customer level and which customers how these uh, otps are actually may managed so this gives me a real time view of uh, of a live view of how many customers such are being been met in time and what a specific customer who is uh, the deliverables are not met so uh, at a given point you can further drill down go to a delivery level data that's the root cause analysis to really see what exactly are the deliveries have not really been met which line items have not been fulfilled so such deep drill downs could be uh, possible right from uh, top till the transactional level <clears throat> similarly you can have other metrics like uh, important is how many cases have been picked per hour which is very very important in terms of my throughput uh, given the number of manpower and equivalently how many cases have been shipped at hourly basis so when you look at uh, these two metrics are very important from how uh, efficiently my warehouse is performing as against a throughput or the performance or the productivity from my resources in my warehouse so resources could be both it could be a uh, operator it could be an mh so put together what is my productivity so this makes a very important statement across uh, how the uh, how how efficiently have my skill, resources are skilled at the same time i also need to know that uh, in case of any short picking i am not able to fulfill there could be a short close orders leading to sudden loss sales so any loss sale is definitely uh, not a green it's always a different color altogether which gives me an immediate alert in terms of how do i take care of this why was this not been addressed why uh, uh, why did we do not do an availability check in plus why was the actual stock not available in the bin so these are certain things which could be proactively taken again uh, as we said as these are live these numbers can keep changing and the percentages may decrease over the volume and what is important is from a cycle point perspective a healthy warehouse is very important the right product in the right place right so the 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 more the accuracy of the inventory the better is able to be pickable so my loss sales percentage definitely comes down uh, so all the uh, targets is toward 100% we can also have set targets if it comes below 90% then really we need to look at it so we need to really investigate it could be a low stock uh, low stock check uh, 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 empty bin scenarios so these could trigger your inventory and a cycle count processes so this is the certain key metrics what a top level executives or from the logistics managers would really want to look at now one step down uh, from the warehouse individual warehouse managers what are they really looking at so what is my volume for the day for the inbound what are my volumes for the day on the outbound side how much have been open how much has been completed so if you are in the morning at uh, 10:30 am right now i still have the scope of finishing all my open deliveries for the day so this could be a healthy approach uh, but uh, from the inbound perspective that could be line items which could be owed you the gr has not been completed so i have set a target that if beyond a certain lines uh, the alert the exception has to be really be visible in terms of 
the number of GRs cannot cross more than say 100 line items probably that depending upon the number of volumes. So I immediately uh, alert the supervisor or the manager saying boss we have a lot of uh, overdue right now in us to be quickly cleared. The same goes for pick items over queue. It's possible that our waves has been released but a few of the pick items have to be left. So it really impacts the customer side of it. Certain other aspects from the uh, the yard perspective uh, wherein you look at a doctor bin cycle. Uh, you look at how many number of waves are there for the uh, for the day. How many pick items has been released. These are certain numbers which really a manager want to look at and ensure that all the uh, KPAs have been met as per that. So I don't need to see really any colors other than the green one. There's no red or no yellow example. So this is the life of the manager on a day basis. Now getting into the operational on a daily basis. So uh, at a shop floor, the supervisor really is going behind the resource, making sure all the uh, items are put away. It's picked and uh, the waves have been really been able to meet the uh, KPIs. So he gets a different view completely. It goes on to the most operator level. So as an EWM provides a very, very fantastic task and resource management. So entire workload management to the resources works on various orders. And of course, he also needs to look at the zone level. So he needs to really know what are my top queues. So queues could be an effective way of assigning the tasks to the uh, resources. So I may need to know what are the queue, what are the zones in my warehouse orders or the top queues in my warehouse orders. So this gives me a, a decision to really rechannel my resources to that particular area and prioritize my queues, which were actually on the bottom of the sequence and um, push it to the top of the queue. So what we do is in the SAP EWM, we use the resource management. We also look at the resource queue sequence. So uh, a queue sequence called PTB6 and PTB2 may be not be the priority for a certain set of resource groups, but a supervisor can actually take a call, go to the master data of the resource group in your EWM and resequence the queues to the top so that the resource starts those uh, various orders are the highest priority. So while queues talks about your uh, the priorities, the zone could give a different picture altogether. Your zone could have multiple queues also, uh, queues as well. So they may have multiple views. Uh, similarly, on the similar front, if you look at, he also needs to see, uh, apart from the zones, what are the goods receipts pending? How many such partial GRs is going? So probably somebody is doing accounting, Somebody is scanning the items still the goods receipt has not been completed or it is completely pending. So maybe the truck is not the truck is unloaded, but the GR is not completed. So this could be the various statuses. So again here we use the SAP EWM status management. Uh, we scan through all the statuses and give a picture upfront to the supervisor without him really going into the dock. Yes, physical presence is needed, but information immediately makes a lot of sense. So uh, similar front, uh, the uh, across all the varos orders. So overall workload, example today is 269 varos orders. So which all oct activities form 269? So it could be put away, it could be internal movement, it could be replenishment. So depending upon the current workload, uh, the supervisor is able to see how many resources are really locked down to the RF device. Again, EWM provides a very effective way of handling the RF. So the moment some resources logged on to your handle device, it immediately gives you an ind indication to the SAP stating this current resource has been logged on. So we capture this as also part of us uh, KPI so that the supervisor is able to take a decision. Although we have 269 varos orders on the floor, um, we are looking at only nine resources working. Why? So that means we have a lot of opportunity to mobilize resources. Uh, to a specific set of activity and uh, in combined with the top queues and the top zones, he is able to take a collective decision at one point, one, one stretch. So in a very typical approach, when you go to the SAP EWM, you use Varos monitor uh, to look at various reports. But again, somebody has to really go through all the reports for a certain filter condition. So uh, what we do is we have a collective dashboard. So he actually is able to take a very fast decision on this. So resource management is one of the very, very key aspects, uh, ensuring that the customer service and the operational excellence are met. 
<coughs> while uh, we looked at an inbound internal activities a uh, lot of companies lot of warehouses uh, take use waves and these waves are spanned across multiple shifts as well so shifts could be depending upon each company how they want to define the timings i may have specified two shifts you can have three shifts as well so you can really see uh, the number of waves which has been created how many items across these waves so these items could have multiple bins to be picked so your number of open tasks and how many such completed tasks which is there. so i know that these many only number of tasks which is there probably there are certain set of waves which has not been released since a number of open tasks is still pending so i can really go back and check it out whether the wave has been released in time or not the same goes for your second shift as well so you can have as many as uh, variants of these particular thing in terms of times and uh, how do you want to uh, see these kpis uh, while and also one of the important thing is uh, availability of stock during picking is replenishments right so replenishment time make sure your picking is also happening in time so uh, which particular zone replenishment your whether it is happening uh, these kpis can also be seen and you can actually all replenishments are highly urgent so you can always have it in a high in a red color indicating that these are high priority items which needs to be immediately actionable so that could be a lot of the kpis which we have so i have just picked and chosen a uh, top few kpis if you see on the top so all these folders are all the groups are actually role driven so a management or a manager who logs in he actually gets his particular folder and the set of kpis he has to really focus although for the demo i have enabled all the possible processes so if you see out here we have every kpi is defined for all different processes one among important processes which we looking at uh, end of the day uh, activities so which is special, uh, especially in housekeeping activity see what happens is uh, sometimes because when you are looking at erp ecc and ewm integrated environment we have lot of queues uh which is actually to be processed because of master data sudden changes in these setups so these queues also needs to be really Im immediately cleared so uh, from a housekeeping perspective or from a, an it perspective we have to make sure that both systems inventory is in line so the queues has to be efficiently cleared on a everyday basis and the same goes for your staging areas uh, it's everybody's dream that the staging areas are never uh, congested so it is always an effort of a supervisor and as uh, the sources to make sure the staging area is clear put away has been completed or the picking has been done and loading and dispatch is completely done so that's that's very very important from a from a staging perspective so he gets a view of what stocks are lying in gr area so the unit of measurement uh, could be depending upon the varo some varos are pallet in pallet out he can have a um as pallets sudden varosos could be monitoring in boxes or it can be in cartons so the uim could be uh, dynamically chosen at the time of the kpi creation uh, it's also important uh, in a large facility there are a lot of varosos forklifts operator involves there are a lot of movements from uh, a bin to this uh, different location so in the process there are a lot of stocks pallets or cartons in the process of being delivered to another location in the warehouse so it's also important uh, how many stocks are lying in the resource so resource could also mean your conveyors so there could be a lot of other kind of stocks which is moving across your conveyors so i know potentially how many such stocks are on staging how many such stocks on your bins and how much in in uh, resource stocks so this is very important from a day in activities to ensure that either on your shift end or your end of the day these stocks can be have to be completely cleared and to be made available to your final locations and if you see uh, these tiles would be more representing how a particular uh, queues are, what kind of queues could be really hampering your business so it is possible that you have new materials but your put away strategies may not be extended so in a manual scenario where uh, it could be manually sift you may have a, a scenario where the put away strategies are not extended but you have, you have your uh, system set maybe your this could be always be zero similarly uh, anything which is not good received 
and ERP could also be a flag, which is very, very critical. Uh, a port away strategy really hampers the uh, resource productivity and he always has to run back to the supervisor. So these are the immediate alerts which uh, the supervisor uh, gets in a day. Uh, a similar uh, perspective on from the LM also. OK, so even from a labor management, if you look at so I can look at uh, the labor attendance for the day across all the various resources. So uh, with the new SAP EWM advanced, uh, advanced labor management uh, with the 9.5 version. So you also have attendance being integrated from third party system. You can actually upload an attendance. So what we have done, we are able to use this attendance and really able to show you how many uh, uh, what is the attendance for the day? How much is the overtime every resource has worked? And what could be your productivity given the attendance? So it is possible that uh, given your uh, uh, weekly meetings or daily follow ups with your supervisor, you have in a shift seven and a half hours of work in that you may have certain breaks which may turn on to 7.15 hours of work. So across this, what is your productivity on your picking or put away? Uh, similarly, it's also uh, that could be certain indirect labor tasks. Example, meetings that could be fire drills, that could be incidents, minor, major. So it's also important to monitor the health of the barrows that no incidents have happened since X number of days. That comes at the safety days. So this comes from the typical standard labor management which is one of the fantastic feature in EWM 9.5. Uh, from a Varos manager uh, who also wants to look at the utilization of the bins. So he really wants to make sure uh, he runs an effective slotting and keeps the product together. It could be slotting could be various reasons. So I can really uh, give a heat map indicator of what stocks are lying in which particular Varos. So it could be stacked or scattered in a specific storage type. So from a demo perspective, I just have few stocks which actually gives a perspective of uh, where the stocks are really lying in my warehouse and it gives me a capacity. So the, the heat map, typical range of the heat map, the darker the color, the, uh, the stronger the stocks are lying in the specific bins. So I can choose a specific site of uh, bins. I can further analyze this and look at how many such bins have the stocks out there. So I can have a closer view of these particular bins, which is full, half full, or it can be empty bins as well. So that could be a lot of use cases. One could be a storage utilization, uh, which is leading to your slottings. Uh, one could be a touches, number of touches in that particular bin. It could have a heat map. So that could be multiple use cases, uh, and it could vary uh, uh, within various industries. So, uh, so likewise, you can also have uh, certain things from the yard managements, from the workloads, where you want to really look at uh, how what is my truck turnaround time, what is my average uh, truck wait time. So, a lot of uh, uh, logistic warehouses also have yard management where they have parking lots in their and their trucks stationed in the parking lots. So, it's possible that a truck is really waiting a very long time really to get a door availability. So this is also an important factor because when you have a higher volume barrels and a lot of trucks in a day, you have to make sure that could be repercussions like either your GR is going slow, your loading is not happening in a very effective manner. So your trucks are completely uh, stationed at parking lots. And you can also have aging of the trucks in terms of number of uh, hours, like zero to 30 minutes, how many hour trucks, anything more than 60, uh, 60 minutes, how many trucks are stationed in your the warehouse? So the list is like it depends upon how do you want to really monitor. We also have certain things in terms of uh, how do you want to see from Dr. Bin. Uh, say example, let's take on the inbound side of it. So sometimes you also need to know uh, from check in to put away, check in to GR, goods received, down to big uh, doc, uh, doc to the bin cycle time. So these things really define our TATs how efficiently are able to, uh, there are two aspects to it. Have the processes really good, smooth? Uh, do we have a very effective design in terms of uh, system perspective? And how well we can actually optimize or leverage the current uh, capabilities of EWM more effectively so that the processes are more, much more optimized? Last but not the least, master data team. 
So there are even uh, uh, KPIs for the masters. So they can also have masters in terms of the career masters. They can have the processors, how many processors are available, uh, how many vendors have been created. It could also be possible by customers, <coughs> masters uh, for which delivery addresses are not completely available. So we can have a variation of that. One interesting aspect is uh, your fixed bin mapping. So you might have a fixed bin map to your products, but due to some redundant reason, your wrong product is in your wrong fixed bin. So this could also be an exception uh, driven metric. There are opportunities in your fixed bins where you have uh, various uh, uh, free bins uh, which has been underutilized. So this you can actually rerun your slotting and figure out what are the most uh, fast moving items and uh, use the opportunity of utilizing these fixed bins as well. So these are also available from a Varos supervisor who actually takes a decision. How do you want to utilize the entire Varos layout from a utilize a capacity perspective? What is very important in a Varos is also to make sure the right product is in the right location. So uh, a physical inventory person who actually is responsible to do a cycle count on a daily basis, he also gets a report. So what is my inventory accuracy? So certain customers uh, go by value. Certain customers uh, go by uh, quantity. So it depends upon uh, industry to industry. So if it's a high value item, you go by uh, value. If it is on the volume or the number of quantity, it can go by quantity as well. So both is uh, both could be tweaked. So I need, really need to know how many uh, PI documents I have created from to do a cycle counting. So I can also check out how many posting has been done. So there's possibility that a certain particular counting requires a recounting and uh, it also be result of a low stock check. So this is one of the key factor which I'm looking at. So low stock check, it could be like you have set a threshold of any bins uh, going below certain five inches. So I really want to check that it is actually five inches or some error in picking. So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, hope I'm able to uh, provide the insights into the various candidate KPIs.